Okay, let's give you guys some more practice. So integrate inverse tan of x squared from 0 to 1. So find this area here. But the thing is, you don't know how to integrate this. So turn it into a series, turn it into a series, and then integrate the series. But the question is, um, how many terms do I need in order to get um, this area, in order to get this area to be within this level of accuracy? Okay, so, so the main question is, how many terms do I need? in order to be sure that the area is within this level of accuracy. So press pause and have a go. Okay, so to do this, let's uh, let's zoom into this bit here. Uh, sorry, let's uh, let's zoom into this whole thing here. So let's zoom, let's zoom into uh, into this whole thing here, and then uh, and then now now imagine this as being x squared. So you've got to put this into into here. So that will then become that would then become that would then become this. So now it's just a matter of tidying this up. This times this. That will then give you this. So um, so inverse tan inverse tan of x squared uh, expressed as a series is given by by this. Now we need to integrate it. Uh, we we don't know how to integrate this. So uh, so we're going to integrate the series. So if you integrate the series, um, remember if you're trying to integrate x squared. If you integrate x squared, it will become a third um, x to the power of three. So, uh, so this, so this thing here is always one notch higher than this. So this thing here. So, so when you integrate this, it will give you, it will give you this because this is one notch higher than this, and then you've got to divide it by by the same thing. So you've got to divide it by the same thing, four x plus three. This is also four x plus three. Well. Integrate this. That will then give us this. So, uh, so we are integrating from zero to one. So this is from zero to one. So when you get to this stage here, imagine it as um, as being as being a fraction minus a fraction plus a fraction minus a fraction, and so on. So you've got to put one into here, uh, put one into here, put one into here, put one into here, and then take away, put zero into here, put zero into here, put zero into here, and so on. Well, you doing that will take you to uh, to here, because if if you put um, if you put zero if you put zero into into here, uh, zero to the power of whatever it will be zero, and then zero divided by whatever it will be zero. So when you put zero into here, everything will be zero. When you put one, when you put one into here, it will this whole thing here, one to the power of whatever will be one. So so you doing that well from here, that will then take you. To here, and then uh, and then we we are trying to work out the number of terms needed in order to get um in order to get our area to be to be within a certain level of accuracy. Well, in order for us to to work out the number of terms needed, we need to think about the um, uh, the the remainder. Now, in order for us to think about the remainder, we need to show that this alternating this is an alternating series that converges. So so. So, uh, so our next step is to show that this is an alternating that converges. So, we need to perform the test. Um, so, first, well, well, our normal routine would be to discard the alternating component, discard the alternating component, concentrate on the UN, concentrate on the UN, make sure all the UNs are positive, make sure all the UNs are, are non-increasing, um, and make sure that the limit as n tends to infinity heads towards zero. I'm assuming you can do all three here. So, uh, so as it turns out, this is an alternating series that converges. Whenever you have an alternating series that converges, then the remainder will always be less than or equal to to this one specific term. Uh, this will, will always be less than this value here, u n plus one. So this is u n. The uh, the uh, the remainder will always be less than or equal to to the next term. So going back to here. This is uh, this is uh, this is our u n here, the current term. The next term will be u putting n plus one. This is the next term into here. Then you need to put uh, n n plus one into here, into here. So uh, so here you have um, uh, here you have two n uh, plus two and then plus one. So that would be three. So this bit here would be this. And then put this into here. That would be 4n plus 4, and then and then you've got this 3 here. So it'd be plus 7. 
So, uh, so the next term will be will be this will be given by 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 this. Okay, so so your remainder will always be less than or equal to to this thing here because that's a theorem that says that the remainder is always less than or equal to to the value of this thing here. So anyway, our our remainder is less than or equal to this thing here. But now we want to set. We want to we we want to demand that our remainder to be less than uh, our level of accuracy. This this was our level of accuracy. So now um, now take the reciprocal of both sides. So that will then take you to to here. So uh, so now it's just a matter of you finding a value of n, capital N, where this side will be bigger than this side. Um, you can turn it into a quadratic equation and solve it, or, or you can just guess. So let's guess n capital N equals the when capital N equals 33. Uh, this thing here equals this. Well, this thing here is less than less than 10,000. We we want we want this to be greater than 10,000. So let's have another guess. When n when n equals 34, when n equals 34, this whole thing here is this. Well, this thing here is now bigger than 10,000. So uh, so our required capital N should be 34. So go. So to answer the question, um, how many terms do we need in order to get this to be within, within our level of accuracy? Well, we need we need 35 terms in order to be 100% sure that the area is within this level of accuracy. So the answer is we need um, we need 35 terms.